Kentucky bluegrass seed is significantly smaller. Like each grain of seed is significantly smaller than perennial rye or fescue for that matter. So when it comes to pounds per thousand square feet, if you're seeding a lawn, you're going to need fewer poundage for Kentucky bluegrass. This is the midnight Kentucky bluegrass. At this point, at day 16, I cannot tell the difference between midnight KBG and the KBG blend. Possibly this one is slightly taller. Slightly, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch. This is a good illustration as to the early growth habits of Kentucky bluegrass versus perennial rye. 16 days, this is what you can expect under the best of circumstances. In your lawn, your mileage may vary. I keep a nice yard full of perennial rye and Kentucky bluegrass. Look at this. This right here is Kentucky bluegrass. It's a blend of three different varieties. Also been growing this in pots since January. Kentucky bluegrass, generally, when you have it in a lawn, it's going to struggle more in the heat and the drought of summer. You're going to have to give probably 50 to 70% more water to this grass type, the Kentucky bluegrass, than you are to the perennial rye. As we move further north into, let's call it polar vortex territory, Kentucky bluegrass really starts to shine because it is more cold tolerant. This isn't really going to factor into many people's decisions unless you live, uh, let's call it in, I don't know, like the middle of the, let's say like North Dakota or Northern Minnesota or some of the coldest areas of Canada. I don't know exactly who you are or where you're watching from, but truly the coldest areas of the world are going to do better with a Kentucky bluegrass than they are with a perennial rye. So if you water the grass maybe once, or twice a week, let's call it on average every five to six days, and you're watering it very, very deeply on those days, you're not going to have too much of um, disease pressure. Likewise, if you're adequately fertilizing your lawn, uh, in addition to watering infrequently and deeply, you're also not going to have very much pressure. Kentucky bluegrass is going to have slightly better resistance to disease and fungal threats than perennial rye is. Kentucky bluegrass will repair itself because it has underground rhizomes. Rhizomes are little underground little root systems or uh, uh, stems that go uh, horizontally and then they angle up and then they start making what appears to be a new plant. But it's all the same plant system. Now, I want to demonstrate to you what that looks like over here. You can see all of these root systems here right along the edge where the paper stone lies. But as we move up here, we can see where the root systems kind of turn into the crowns of the grass. Now, in this area, you see a lot of just basic roots. But as we move over here, we see things like, like this. You see this? That is going horizontally, and then it starts angling up, and somewhere goes up in here. Now, we've got lots of these things, but as I move around, you'll see a whole bunch of... There's probably a mother plant of some kind over here, bluegrass plant, that is sending rhizomes this way. And then they angle up and then they come up above the ground. This plant right here, you've got green leaves up on top. And then it goes down into the kind of the crown stem area. And it just goes down. You've got green going into pale green, going into white, going into the ground. This is what Kentucky bluegrass looks like. Let's call it, there's a shoot sticking up out of the ground. Now, off of that shoot, uh, a new leaf kind of comes out of it. I don't know, if this isn't helping at all. Uh, a new leaf comes out of it. The leaf is wrapped around the inner shoot. Now, with Kentucky bluegrass, the leaf is wrapped around kind of like this. It doesn't wrap all the way around. This is called the oracle. Now, the shoot that comes out of the oracle is folded. So that leaf coming out of the oracle is folded at the base and then kind of opens up into this kind of like boat shape. Let me show you. Here is Kentucky bluegrass. Let me fold these things over a little bit. That one right there. You see how it kind of looks ever so slightly cupped at the end. Ever so slightly cupped at the end. And you see that line going down the middle? That is a telltale sign of Kentucky bluegrass. You also notice on both sides of the blade, 
Nothing really looks particularly shiny. It's kind of more matte. They're smooth to the touch and very, very soft, but there's nothing shiny about them. Over here, on the Orai, you're going to find lots of like reflective shininess. Like, look at that right there. It almost looks moist or like mirrored, reflectioned. But I mean, right there, look at that. That thing is shiny right there. Over here, you're not really seeing shine at all. Maybe a touch of it right in there, but it's just different. Uh, the uncut tips kind of come into this boat shape. When you cut it with a lawnmower or scissors, uh, you don't really see the true natural tip that that um, that is supposed to grow. Look at that right there. It's a boat shape with a little like point. So long as you can keep water on it, it won't die in the heat. It will just go dormant. If you don't keep enough like water on it, it will just go dormant through the summer. Because Kentucky bluegrass has rhizomes, you're gonna end up finding down at the base. Uh, you're going to have more thatch problems. In fact, for of all the cold season grasses, Kentucky bluegrass is going to have the most thatch problems of them all. So you're going to have to uh, regularly think about putting liquid dethatching products on this or running mechanical dethatchers over. And it's going to grow slower. It's going to germinate slower. It's going to grow slower, but it will repair itself. This grass seed will germinate slightly colder temperatures than perennial rye. But even though even though it grows in slightly colder temperatures, uh, you're not really going to effectively notice a difference. Um, if you were to plant this in the spring, you would have an enormously hard time getting it to establish by the summer. Now, we'll talk about seed heads. Kentucky bluegrass gets its name because it's got this little blue hue to its seed heads. So that right there is a Kentucky bluegrass seed head. If you look at it up close, it looks a little bit like a pine tree sitting on top of a long grass blade. And it looks slightly bluish purple. I mean, short lawns can still go to seed, and I can prove it because my lawn is very short. But if you get in really close, you can see, like right there, there's some seeds popping up right there. So, no matter how long your lawn is, it can still go to seed. If you look at the seed head, you can actually identify the shape of it. That little pine tree shape is going to be a telltale sign of Kentucky bluegrass. Kentucky bluegrass is not going to excel very much in. Uh, full shade. It really needs full sun. If you've got a heavy shaded area like this or over where my sun is over there, although it's in the sun right now, that spot is usually shaded. That's a prime spot in a cold season lawn for a fine fescue. Fine fescues are the shade tolerant grasses and that's what goes into shade mixes that you're going to see uh, on the store shelves uh, for cold season lawns. Fine fescues get mixed in because they do well in shade. As you look into uh, Kentucky bluegrass, this is a midnight. This is the variety midnight Kentucky bluegrass. I also have a blend of Kentucky bluegrass right here. Uh, this is a single variety. Um, what you can tell, however, is the grass blade itself. It really feels silky smooth, whereas even the turf type tall fescue has some uh, texture to it, almost like a fine grit sandpaper. If you want a grass type in your cold season lawn category, like let's say, like just imagine like United States, just cut it in half, north and south, all the way across the board. And it's kind of going to angle down closer towards like Phoenix, Arizona. Um, so it's not a, an exact parallel line. But if you were on the north side of that line, you're going to be running a cold season grass for the most part. So if you're in that territory, this is actually going to do better than your turf type tall fescues. Turf type tall fescues are what we call a cold season slash transition zone, uh, transition zone grass. It's going to be the hardest one to keep out of summer dormancy as you move south into the, into the transition zone. The reason for that is this requires more fertilization. Uh, you're going to have to fertilize this probably twice as much. You're also going to need probably twice as much water. And during the hottest parts of the summer, you might even have to spritz this in between regular watering sessions just to cool off these leaf blades. So let's say you're in like South Carolina and you're growing a Kentucky bluegrass. You might end up feeling a very hot weekend that might be like around 100 degrees. This grass type is going to want to check out pretty quick. Um, so you're going to have to sit there and spritz it with water in between your regular deep watering sessions just to keep it out of dormancy. Lots of people that grow this in the transition zone end up 
uh, letting it go dormant. This doesn't even pertain to the transition zone. Sometimes, uh, sometimes more northern climates, let's say like Ohio's and Illinois's and uh, uh, Iowa's, they might find particularly warm stretches, hot stretches throughout the summer where you're going to find it hard to keep one going. Bluegrass is going to fix itself. Kentucky bluegrass is really the only cold season grass type that will spread horizontally. So if there's a salt blemish in your yard, so long as you keep the grass like active, growing, not dormant, if you fertilize it, water it, it will slowly spread into those spots and fix themselves. In my opinion, the soft texture of Kentucky bluegrass and the ability to spread into holes or weak spots of the lawn truly is the biggest selling point of Kentucky bluegrass. Now, you're also going to find Kentucky bluegrass tends to be cut in the one and a half to three inch range. So depending on who's cutting the grass, you're going to be cutting Kentucky bluegrass generally in one and a half to three inch height of cut. Out in my lawn, I have a mixture of Kentucky bluegrass and perennial rye. Perennial rye is the other cold season grass. It tends to be cut a little bit shorter than Kentucky bluegrass, but it can go a little bit taller. This one is not going to feel lumpy at all. If you want a smooth lawn that really just feels great under a bare foot and never really feels lumpy, Kentucky is the way to go. The problem with it, though, is it's the hardest one to establish. So I've saved this part for last. Um, it is easily the hardest cold season grass night in establishment of lawns. It is actually particularly hard to germinate Kentucky bluegrass and get even spread for a long period of time. Now, you can get good germination in about two weeks time under ideal uh, circumstances. Within 30 days, you've got pretty good germination across the board, but it's a long time before Kentucky bluegrass starts establishing itself as a grass type that has taken over an area. We're talking like in a lawn setting, it's very hard, almost impossible to get this grass type to establish well in the in the spring growing season. This right here is something that you put down at the end of summer in a cold season climate and grow it through the early fall to establish itself over the winter. It'll, it'll winterize itself down in the root system and it will become an, an amazing looking lawn next year. So if you are planning on putting down a grass seed in spring, put decide, I mean, just, just suck it up. Wait until fall to put down Kentucky bluegrass. Ever curious how long it takes Kentucky bluegrass to, I don't know, establish itself, mature a little bit? I planted Kentucky bluegrass four months ago, and then immediately right next to it, I planted more Kentucky bluegrass two months ago. You can literally tell the difference between four-month-old and two-month-old Kentucky bluegrass side-by-side side in the real world. This is what I affectionately call my side yard. It's right next to my driveway. I killed off everything here during the, uh, the spring and the summer, and then I installed Kentucky bluegrass. For those of you who care, this is Midnight Kentucky Bluegrass. It was seeded in uh, mid-July 2023. I planted it everywhere, but in September, I had to come back and kill everything off, everything that is lime green. I had to kill it off because I had uh, invading weeds, or uh, I should say grassy weeds, that I couldn't easily isolate. So I just killed the whole thing off, and then I reseeded this part in September. So everything that's dark is four-month-old Kentucky Bluegrass, and everything that's light is two-month-old Kentucky bluegrass. And you might be wondering why it's all jagged. Well, it's literally because I, I draped an extension cord around everything that I wanted to kill off uh, so that I knew exactly where to spray. I didn't want to kill everything. I didn't want to kill the stuff that I didn't need to. You also notice that four-month-old stuff is really thick. It's filled in. Whereas the younger stuff that's two months old now, this might be a little bit too bare, but it's nowhere near as thick, and that's because it needs time to fill in these spaces. So small little spaces like this, and like this, this, this. These areas are going to completely fill in with about two more months worth of growth, and they're going to end up looking exactly like this. Kentucky bluegrass always comes in thin. But if you trust the process and give it enough time, it's going to look magnificent.
Now, I could go on and on, but I think it would be better served to learn some of the most beginner-friendly tip that I could possibly deliver to you about taking care of your lawn better this year. I got a video up here uh, on beginner-friendly tips. There's eight of them in that video. It's a palatable video for just about anyone, no matter how much you care about going the extra mile.